some time has passed, an indeterminate unit of time between the last job I did on the C6 and today. It's probably about six weeks, two months, something like that. Um, the last video I've recorded when I was working on the car, which you, if I get my act together, uh, you will have seen, um, was just after I've changed the valve block for the other used one. Done all the other bits and bobs on it. I hadn't finished every job, but I'd done all the jobs that were needed, got the car through the MOT, and it has been in daily use. It's probably done another, well, I don't know, I'd have to consult my first, no, my second video with the mileages on it, but I've probably done 800 miles, 1,000 miles, something like that. That's not really enough. Um, I think it needs a run. So what I've done is I've arranged for a friend to take it away, which I'm kind of sad about because I, I like it, but he's going to take it away and he lives quite a long way away, which is good because it means it can get a nice long chance to stretch its legs, regen its stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, basically clear its crud. But before it goes, I've got a couple more bits to do on it, including changing the oil. Now the engine oil on this car hasn't been done. Uh, well, I haven't done it. And it's not like these engines are known for snapping crankshafts or anything. So yeah, I'm gonna change the oil before it goes because the oil does have kind of detergents in it as well. Um, so hopefully that'll clean the engine a little bit. I've actually got enough to do two oil changes. So I'm gonna do one before he goes. And then when he comes back, he's probably gonna do about 500 miles in it, I would think, but it's continuous mileage it's not stop start short journeys it's continuous and up to the operating temperature type mileage um and when he's back i'll probably give it another thousand miles and then i'll drain it and do it again um, and i'll also put in the waterless coolant that i'm going to run it on um when he gets back as well because uh yeah the cooling system isn't done yet there's some more mods to do that is a hell of scratch when did that i was i thought that was a bit of a big scratch i thought that was a hair or something sad face yeah so i'm gonna get the car into the workshop now um and uh yeah change the oil see if i can figure out how to change the pollen filter I, I don't know where that is but i have one and just give it a couple of checks before it goes see how the mods are holding up that i did and um yeah wish him all the best on his journey now it isn't lost on me that i own a car that's kind of interesting people do like to uh hear about it for some reason um, in fact, the first video I did on this, I've just checked because I don't check them very often, but the first video I did on this has absolutely smashed all my records of all the cars I've done, all the videos I've done. It's absolutely blitzed it. And I don't know why that is, if I'm honest. It's just me talking in front of it. Yeah, so I haven't actually driven the thing. I haven't done a, a POV drive. I haven't done a look around. I haven't really gone into any detail about the car. And because it's going away, I'm not going to until it comes back. Um, which seems an odd order to do things, but of course my priority has been to try and get the thing running properly and then use it because it is actually my car. This is my daily car. Begs the question, what am I going to use when it's not here? But yeah, how has it been since it went back on the road? That's the, that's the, the key question, I suppose. The question that's on uh, nobody's lips. It's better. It's better. So we did a number of modifications. The belt idler, um, and tensioner bearings well that's been silent since um there is still a rattle on startup uh one of the i think there's a timing chain that goes from cam to cam if i remember rightly on each head it has got a it's timing belt engine but it has got chains in it as well and i'm hoping that oil change might help that situation because it rattles uh, on startup for the first sort of two or three seconds just as the tensioner sort of primes itself um so that was good the next jobs i did were all the bushes the suspension bushes, the lower frip joints, the brakes, um, everything like that really. Did the axis of the uh, wishbone, the pivot axis, did changing that change the car? Um, yes, but not dramatically. Um, so it did improve it. Um, sorry, I've got a bit of breakfast stuck in my tooth. It did improve it. It's still a little bit like this. I'm not, not really happy with it. Um, I've read different accounts from different people. Uh, some people say, no, that is just how they are. Sorry, that's, they're not actually as good as some of the older Citroëns. Um, but I, I have a theory on this and I'll, I'll probably discuss that theory in a, in a POV drive or 
uh, road test vid or something i'll do some sort of proper vid out and about in the open driving um with this car because i've got some ideas but some people have said yeah no that's just how they are um but one of the other things i was looking at doing the suspension remap remap my suspension um but i'm not 100 percent convinced yet i don't know if i like the idea because a lot of people have said um it ruins the ride it makes it too stiff it stops all this but it kind of yeah it makes it firmer which in uh, in a way makes sense because people seem to want firmer cars these days so maybe citroen would have changed it to do that um can't say that really appeals that kind of that's against the whole point of what this car is the other thing which i've not really considered and i should have considered is um the spheres uh, the spheres in this car are big grey flying saucer type ones, they're not the old green type, though the principle is the same, rubber diaphragm inside, gas one side, fluid the other, squishy squishy. The fluid is LDS, it's not LHM, so it's a different type of fluid and because of that these spheres, I mean I think, I, I can't remember if I read in the, the gump for these cars when they were new that they were supposed to last the life of the vehicle or some huge amount of time, you know, standard LHM Citroen spheres, I mean, the genuine ones, the proper genuine ones from the 80s and 90s, you'd probably get quite a long time out of those in a, in a BX or something. You'd get, well, it depends on the driving, but I mean, I've, I've seen cars sort of 70, 80,000 miles on the original spheres, but, you know, for argument's sake, most people change them about 40 um, or after a period of time where the gas has escaped. Um, so they were seen more as a service item, kind of like a shock absorber or you know, damper would be on a normal car. These ones weren't supposed to be like that. But, so while the car, if this were a BX on a hun nearly 160,000 miles, a BX would be rock hard by now, as would a Xantia, as would an XM, blah, blah, blah. This car isn't, but if it has lost a little bit of gas from those spheres, um, of, I'm not going to go into complexities of the spheres, but basically you've got your metal ball, a rubber diaphragm inside, gas one side, fluid the other, as I say, and the gas the more gas you have the higher that pressure in the sphere the softer the ride i know that makes no sense on the face of it but it does because the uh, fluid is not compressible but the gas is so if you don't have much gas in there the fluid will compress what's in there and run out of things to compress and go hard so it will firm up the more gas you've got in there the more it has to compress and it becomes more progressive so if you lose gas you actually end up with spheres that are slightly stiffer now in an old LHM car, you might lose all the gas or you might lose a big chunk of it, enough to make the car ride like something bad that does that. The difference in this car is it might not have lost that much. It might have only lost 10 PSI or 50 PSI or something like that. It may not have lost much, but if it loses a little bit, all the parameters that the computer governs the suspension on will be wrong because it's got the sphere on each wheel and it's got another one in the middle, like an extra sphere. You have to watch the XM video for a little bit of a explanation. The POV drive and the XM, I'll talk a little bit about how the center spheres work. And this car does have center spheres um, like an XM. And it also has an electronic rigidity regulator. It has a system that can regulate the fluid going to that center sphere or not. And the only thing that can't change is all the kind of the rules and the laws, they call them, in the ECU and it's possible that the car is doing what it's supposed to do and it's profiling bumps and everything like that and when the back end hits it it might then be thinking right the front end just did that bump therefore we need to do xyz for the rear end but if the gas pressures are different either in the front or the rear then it shouldn't be doing that it should do something different to suit the fact it's got different pressures only it doesn't know it has different pressures so everything could be slightly wrong. So the first thing to do before I think about doing anything with the ride in terms of getting the software updated is to get the spheres off um, and have them uh, pressure tested. Now, I can't do that here. I don't have the equipment. So it would be either a case of taking the car to somebody and paying them to do it, which is a, an alien concept to me. Um, or I take the spheres off the car and I either drive them to said place um, I think it's in Cambridgeshire, so that's probably not an option because that's a long way. Or I post them there. Uh, I think they do mail order, so I could post them there, label them up, post them off, 
get them tested, find out what the pressures are, and then if required, and I suspect they will be um, required, uh, get them regassed. I may even ask them to put a teeny tiny bit more in. No, don't do that. I'll take whatever their advice is because they do that all the time. Um, so yeah, that's probably what I'll do when the car comes back. I don't know exactly when. I have to, the car will be off the road for a while while I do that. Um, so I may wait until, well, I don't know. Nothing would really stop me, is there? Yeah, I may wait a while before I do that. I don't know. We'll see how it pans out. Might take a break off paying £55 a month for tax. Um, that'll pay for half the regas. So, yeah, that's what I'll do in the future. But for now, the plan is to get the... Oh, I thought my pa wooden panel was scratched then. Um, for now, the plan is to get the oil changed, give it a quick check over underneath. It's about to do more miles in one hit. We won't do them today, it'll do them tomorrow, than it's ever done with me, um, which I'm sad about because I wish I was the one driving it, but I'm a busy life. So yeah, on the ramp, dirty oil out and uh, new oil in. So I've moved inside the workshop to drain the oil from the C6. I actually had to move inside the workshop because I don't know if you can hear that. Yay, no. Um, that's next door. Uh, they have a rat problem. And that means I have an alarm problem because they've all gone because there's something going on about the queen and there's rats in there and they put their alarm on. And that's probably been going off all night. So, uh, but it's fine because I had to be inside anyway to get the oil out of this. The oil is warm, nice and hot. Um, not too hot, hopefully, that could hurt. And so we'll drain that out. And say so I'm gonna just put in, uh, put a new filter in it, obviously. So here is the oil filter. Big, isn't it? I'm not joking, I think my first car, which was a BX, I know that's surprising. Um, the air filter wasn't much bigger than that. Yeah, the purpose of this, I really have to get this oil changed before the car goes on a long journey because it hasn't been done for a long time. And the problem with modern diesels is they've got these clever systems which are designed to basically stop the pollutants getting out of the engine through the exhaust and into the atmosphere by trapping them in other things, either by sucking them back in and burning them again or just putting them in the oil. Um, so the oil ends up getting really black and manky. I mean, you put the oil in, it will look crystal clear and, oh, the alarm's gone off. You put the oil in, it'll look crystal clear. You run the engine for five seconds and it's black again. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it needs doing. I'm gonna do two changes. I'm gonna do a change now and a change later. Uh, yeah, so this is gonna be black and manky and horrible. So gloves. If I was clever, I would have checked that I've got the right socket to remove the oil filter housing before I drain the oil. But because this car is so heavy, it takes ages uh, for the ramp to go up and down, and I can't be bothered to wait for it again. So I'm just going to trust the universe. Oh my God, maybe I shouldn't trust it so much. Oh, jeez. What does that tell you? It tells you that I'm either weak and feeble or that someone had problems sealing this up before, so they did it up FT. All right, here we go. This is going to be black and manky. See? Ugh. It's actually quite a thin oil. Uh, 5.30. Which for a diesel seems crazy, but that's what all these modern diesels use. This is riveting stuff, I know. Oh, oh, it's changed shape. It looks like a Cobra. Well, I'm going to leave that for a bit because this is not really good uh, viewing, is it? Ugh. Right, um, what I'm going to do is just assist it with an airline. I do this with most cars because that's why. Oh no! Some idiot moved the oil catch thing just now. Yeah, you'll see why. Oh, 
that's weird, it's got some sort of baffle. Unless that's the pickup, unless it's... Look at that! And it's all coming down the airline. And the thing is, the dregs, the stuff that's left, that will be uh, the dirtiest stuff because it's in the places that never fully drains itself. So you get a collection of silt and whatnot there, especially in cars that don't do many miles. Like this one. This one's done loads of miles, but doesn't do many miles now. So in about 40 years time, this might be low mileage. The fact the sump's dented doesn't help because there'll be a load of it around here as well. The sump's got a huge great dent in it there. Someone has ground it out on something. If only it had suspension that could raise. It wouldn't have happened. And me, look at this. Like a Dalmatian. Right, I'm gonna have to clean that floor. Yeah. Mucky. Really, I would expect it to have hydraulically opening. Well, I suppose it has. Technically, it does. But I mean an automated, hydraulically opening bonnet. Right, where's the oil filter? Guessing it's going to be in some inaccessible place under there. Oh. Okay. 32. Oh, I'm so good. What I don't want to do, I'm hoping that when I unscrew this, it doesn't spew a load of oil out into the V, because that would be really annoying. Into the valley between the cylinders. It's got a big, do not use a wrench. Do not use a windy gun. Read the manual. Okay, well, I'm adhering to two of them. Ugh, how can you read? Gargling. What's that noise? Oh, I can hear it leaking back into the sump. Are you supposed to do that first? Do not spill, please. Oh, that's a really snug fit. Oh, so the oil filter is inside. Oh, it's dripping everywhere. So did it? Oh no, it's in its own little bowl. <laughs> That's quite clever. Try and mop out what's in there. Because it's all black and... Oh. Okay. This is messier than they normally are. Not C6 oil filters, because this is the first one I've ever changed, but just oil filters in general right okay uh i need a siphoning device all right this device is actually made for bleeding brakes but it doesn't work very well for that so i just use it for sucking out anything i don't want to touch So I've cleaned the uh, filter housing in the engine. Um, does this just pull out? I assume it does. How does that come out exactly? What's wrong with canister filters? Hmm. Well, I guess that's part of the filter there, that top. This bit here, and it spins round. But I guess it's just clicked in. Let's have a look and see. I didn't want to break that off in case that was an important part of the filter housing. Oh, right, I'm going to have to change the gloves. Because they've leaked. Right, yeah, so that, that was part of the filter. There's a new seal there, that'll be for the housing. 
there's a new o-ring on this uh feed or return whatever that is so i just need to bust that out the brand that's been using it before will tell me how much the uh people who've serviced it before care do they put profits first or do they put products first i don't know who serviced it before and i won't be able to slag off a particular oil filter brand but um i'll know i now have a chance to use a special tool this is a set of needle nose pliers that i um modified they've got bent ends so i can just hopefully oh nope how are you supposed to get I know, I'll put it in a vise and I'll clamp the little bit on the end there and yank the whole thing off. It's not overkill or anything. The vise worked. Although some might claim it's overkill, but there we go. Oh, it hasn't started to collapse or anything. That's a good sign. If you leave them in too long, they go all rippled and stuff. Can we see a brand on it? There might be. It's the same brand I'm fitting. It is the same round I'm fitting, but I'm fitting a superseded part. This is a 205-2, and I'm fitting a 205-2D, which has different colour tops and bottoms. So maybe it's improved, I don't know, but that's good. Uh, so that can go in there. And then if I just... Oh, this is going to take a while, isn't it? See what it takes me ages to do. Th oh no, don't rip. Oh, that's not good. Right, there you go, that's pretty clean in there. So then it's just a case of popping there you go, yep, yeah, and that rotates, that's good. So the new seal will just Sit over the top, make sure I don't get it kinked. It makes sort of, it's a square seal, but it makes it sit on a sort of angled plane, which is quite good. And then, yeah, I put that in, that should, as the filter bowl rotates, that should find its home and click into place. So, yeah, I suppose it's literally as simple as just. Doing that. Ooh. Is that the filter finding its home? My torque wrench is broken, so I shall guess what 25 newton meters is. About that much. <laughs> OMG, Jeopardy, wrong oil klaxon. Those who know these cars will be looking at that oil and going, that's not the right one. Okay, so this is a C3 oil. And I need C6 for that. No, I don't. I need C2. Um, basically, this oil here is very similar to the stuff this car is supposed to run on. But because I'm going to take it out and change it, probably... I don't know, 1,000 miles, 1,500 miles, something like that. I'm going to run this in it. Um, I got this for free. That's another reason I'm going to run it. I've got two bottles of it. Uh, this came, um, there was a Practical Classics photo shoot when Citroen killed off hydropneumatic suspension. Um, and it was organised, and it was at Donington Park in the paddock, in the pouring rain. And I went up in one of my beer, well, went up in my 16 valve, my BX 16 valve, and there was SMs, DSs. They did them in a big triangle, all the hydropneumatic cars, including um, a traction, no, what, what do you call it, a light 15H? The one with the hydraulic rear end. So, yeah, um, and Total uh, had a stand there, and they were giving away loads of free stuff. Um, I didn't get any oil for the BX, but that was left at the end, and I picked these up. Um, so this is... It probably is the same kind of stuff. It's a mid sap soil, same as the C2, which is supposed to go in it. It's basically, you get, I mean, it's 530, so a lot of people go, oh, you just need 530 oil. No, 
no, no, no. Uh, a lot of people, oh, you know, oh, it's semi-synthetic. Oh, it's synthetic, though. It's synthetic, though. Yeah, all, all oil is synthetic now, pretty much. You don't really get any mineral oils anymore. Even the, even the mineral oils, I mean, I use them on TVRs. Even the mineral oils aren't anything like as basic as they used to be. So, the, um, yeah, this stuff, basically, it's got detergents in it that are designed to help the engine run for longer with it, to reduce fuel economy, to help clean out all the contaminants and everything that get put in the oil from the DPF, and, or from the EGR, rather. So, basically, yeah, it's... You have to get the right type. There's so many different types of 530 oil now. Um, but this is the one I'm going to use for now. And then I've also got some other stuff I bought, which is C2. And that is the exact spec this car is supposed to use. So it will probably, apparently it will not be quite as frugal with this stuff in it. But it was not frugal anyway. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to chuck this in. I don't know how much it takes, but this isn't actually completely full. I think I've topped something up with this one. I don't know what it was. Probably Vecchi. Um, so I've got my sump plug back in. I've drained out what was in the um, sump again. And now I just pour this in. I've cleaned out the uh, oil filler cap as well, which had a Ford part number in it. But it's not a Ford engine. It is. This could be, I'll edit this out. Right, the oil is in. We now start the engine. And pray that nothing breaks. Because I always get funny about engines not being able to prime themselves and things, but it's a modern engine. I'm just being paranoid. So. Shut up, shut up. Hey. Yeah, that's a horrible noise. That's the uh, Rattly timing chain. Uh, that lasted a lot longer than it normally does. Normally it knocks out almost straight away, but then, I'm guessing because I drained all the oil out of it and it had to charge back up, uh, it took ages. All right, now I'm gonna knock it off and check the oil level again. And then a million sensors will do stuff. I don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. you. Because obviously I've started it now, so now various uh, parts that didn't have oil in before will now have oil in, including that filter. So I'll check the level again, because I did actually overfill it very slightly. And you don't want to overfill a diesel, that is not good. Let's see if it's gone black yet. Yeah, okay, this dipstick is like a nice, high quality, well engineered piece of equipment, but it doesn't work because the oil that goes on it is just, you can't tell where it is. It's just, I mean, look. It's a mess, on one side it's there, on the other side it's there, so which is it? I think I'm just gonna have to wait a little bit wait for it all to fully drain back and just dip it once and find out i think it's about right so there we go one oil change done it's ready for its test drive yeah basically since i've done all the work it, it is much better than it was the suspension is a little more composed i still think the spheres have got a little to answer for um, the gearbox it's not fixed but it's better, um, which then leads me to think, is it that this valve block is actually not much good either, or is there another problem as well as the valve block, or could it be that the gearbox is just forever going to be my nemesis? I don't know. Um, the valve block that's in it now, much like the old one really, when, when the car's stone cold, you wouldn't know there was a problem. It, it behaves impeccably. Um, it's only when it warms up. There is no slipping in any gear at all anymore. That's the crucial thing. And that's why it can now make a long journey, whereas before it just couldn't do it. Um, there's no slipping in any gear. It doesn't get jammed in gear or anything. I mean, it's a bit, 
it can be a bit difficult to get itself sorted when you go to pull away from the lights. So if you slow down at a junction, you see a gap and you think, right, I'll go, and you put your foot down a bit, it won't go back into first. It'll, it'll hang on to second and bog down. Um, not entirely sure uh, if, I mean, well, it's probably, it's probably not supposed to do that, but making quick getaways and junctions is just, I mean, it's, you put your foot down and nothing happens. And the gear comes in like a, a second later and then it lunges forward. It's it's really quite frustrating at junctions. You can't nip out in traffic in it. It's just, it won't do it. Well, I mean, it will, but it won't nip. It will just crawl and then you'll get T-boned by whatever it is you're trying to get out in front of. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I wouldn't say it's fixed at all, but it is better than it was. I mean, the worst you get now with the clonk going into reverse and some slightly less than smooth gear changes. I mean, they're not awful, but they're not, well, it's not slipping and it is finding the gears and it is going in all the gears. So um, I suspect I'm gonna be in a quandary in the future. Do I buy a new valve block, despite the fact I've already bought a second-hand gearbox for 500 quid, but I'm gonna do a bit more research. If it turns out that it's very likely that it is the valve block, um, or almost can be confirmed that it's the valve block, then I'll consider buying a new valve block, which is not cheap, but then once I've done that and got the air conditioning sorted and the spheres are done, it's pretty sorted, really. <laughs> that's about it. I mean, yeah. Until the suspension pump packs up, that's the thing that kills them most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's about done. And cars improve no end. It's a pleasure to drive at the moment. We'll do some tests. I'll... Yeah, we'll look around it and stuff uh, when it comes back from its little trip away with its, uh, well, I suppose it's being a courtesy car, really. Um, and yeah, when it comes back, we'll do some proper stuff. But for now, she's all right. She's working. She's on the road. I'm going to go and have something to eat and get clean. <laughs>